The Patriots have hired one of their own, linebackers coach Gerard Mayo. His nickname is Bill Jr. His entire career was New England. It would not be my first choice. He's a defensive head coach. You know how I feel about that. It's a lame, talentless offense, and uh, good luck for a linebacker coach trying to solve it. I do, however, think there is a way to solve it, and the Houston Texans are the way. Um, Hit. Got the number three pick in the draft. Hitting a quarterback. You get Drake made, Jaden Daniels, LSU. Kid becomes C.J. Stroud-like. And you have a smart GM-level guy that can do the personnel in the draft. And you can just worry about the defense and getting it right. Listen, Sean McDermott's in with a great quarterback. Todd Bowles has Baker Mayfield. He made the playoffs. John Harbaugh's got Lamar Jackson. If you hit on a quarterback, that's where defensive coaches thrive. You fix the defense, have a star quarterback lead the offense. But he is known as Bill Jr. So it shows the power of tradition. In the Northeast, I lived there for a decade. Boston is the most provincial town out East. It's lovely. It's wonderful. I've got friends there. It's a stay within the family town. Fences make good neighbors, as they say, in New England. Uh, it is, you know, they, they keep their arms around the region. If you look at most great hires... It's outsiders, though. Sean Payton to New Orleans was an outsider. McVay to the Rams. Shanahan to the 49ers. Stefanski, all those years in Minnesota, Cleveland. He's going to win his second head coach of the year. Pete Carroll in Seattle, no connection. If you look throughout the NFL, it's mostly outsiders. John Harbaugh to the Ravens. A couple of coaches we like now, young guys. Shane Steichen, Indy, no connection. Zach Taylor, Cincinnati, no connection. Mike McDaniel, Miami, so outsiders do very, very well. Um, and I would have tried to get an offensive guy and a new set of eyes and new ideas and new perspective, but they're going to go with Bill Jr. It really comes down to their first draft pick. If they can find a quarterback and hire like the Texans did, a really sharp guy upstairs, you can turn this around quickly. I mean, the, the Texans were a joke this time last year, an absolute joke, top bottom. Now, I, have, I think they're going to win this weekend. I think they have a real shot to win this weekend. So, the, But the Patriots, it does feel like, to me anyway, the Patriots are just adding a new chapter to the same old book. But it's the power of tradition. It's hard to let go. I grew up as a kid, and uh, my college football team, the Huskies, won a national title. And for the next 25 years, anybody that knew the former coach had a coffee with them. They often wanted to hire as the head coach. That's just the way it works in football. If you've had great, sustained success, you generally look within. I would go outside. I would go offense. I would reboot. But, um, again, you hit on the quarterback in the draft. Texans did it. The Patriots certainly can. Here's Eric Mangini, the former Patriot, plenty of rings yesterday. Drod's never played anywhere else. He's never coached anywhere else. The only system he knows is the system that he's been in. So you're going to get a younger version, a different personality, but he can't draw on any outside experiences of other ways to do it. I don't know if you want to go follow Bill Belichick because of of what the expectations are. And Gerard Mayo, I'm sure he's an excellent candidate, but it's the same thing that you had, and and that could be – that's going to be challenging. Yeah, all the years I've been doing this, it's just a very – powerful reality sustained success means you look backwards you lean into it you hire the assistant the player the connectivity between the ex legend and hopefully the new legend it's just the way it works not the way i do it but get a quarterback i could be wrong so there's a story dan graziano a very good reporter is reporting that uh the eagles firing nick seriani on monday if they lose to the buccaneers is on the table. So we have talked about this. This is the place that nobody's discussing with Belichick because it's not open, but I think it's a real possibility. Strong ownership, excellent personnel guy, what they need is somebody to shore up their linebackers and secondary. That's literally Bill Belichick's forte. He wouldn't have to be the personnel guru He wouldn't talk much with the owner. He likes to do his own thing. They've got the quarterback. They've got the receivers, tight ends, the O-line. Cap is fine. Um, That one works. But Philly would have to lose. I don't think they will. 
But I do think it points out something that's fairly obvious, and it took a while to figure out or did it. Nick Sirianni, between his sort of juvenile sideline annex and theatrics, uh, his anxiety at the podium, and the total erosion of the Eagles' offense, and he's an offensive guy, it appears that Nick Sirianni's a bit over his skis. It was Brandon Staley with the Chargers. The more money they spent on defense, the worse it got. Had to fire him. They're spending plenty of money on offense in Philadelphia. It's bad and getting worse. All the great coaches offensively in this league, McVay, Shanahan, Andy Reid, they lose coordinators all the time. It has very little effect on the quality of the offense. I mean, Kevin Stefanski's on his fourth quarterback. It's had no effect on the offense. Zach Taylor lost Joe Burrow halfway through the season. They finished above 500. Sirianni just lost a coordinator. He didn't lose A.J. Brown. He didn't lose Donovan Smith. He didn't lose his left tackle. He didn't lose Kelsey. He didn't lose. He just lost a coordinator. McVay loses him annually. Shanahan loses him regularly. Andy Reid lost several. He loses a coordinator, and it's man overboard. So uh, we have multiple offensive coaches this year on their second, third, and fourth quarterback. Steichen, Kevin Stefanski. Look at Green Bay. Look at how much. Jordan Love has improved October 15th to close to January 15th. He is like a new player. I mean, you can say you knew all along, but Lafleur was barking at Jordan Love after games at the podium in October, and now all he talks about is how good his parents are, what a great kid he is. I mean, it's like transform Jordan Love, and Jordan obviously deserves a lot of credit for that. But here's what I would ask you. Whenever I have... A question about a coach. The first thing I ask is, are they getting their side of the ball right? Nick Sirianni loses a coordinator. All the talent in the world can't. The second thing is, Brandon Staley's Chargers. What's your identity? I thought it was analytics, and then it stopped being analytics. What is Nick Sirianni's identity? Is he a great play designer? No. A great play caller? No. A a massive culture builder like Dan Campbell in Detroit? Not really. (laughs) <laughs> so when he got hired, I said, I talked to two or three people in the league, and they all said the same thing. I don't know if he's ready. He butchered the opening press conference, honestly. Looked absolutely terrified to be up there. And it was very turbulent for a year until Shane Steichen started calling plays. And my guess is Shane Steichen created a shield to protect his limitations because that's what it looks like right now. Sometimes in life, it takes a while for the truth to come out. You have a a protector, a shield, and you're really over your skis, and we just don't know it, and all of a sudden the shield leaves, moves on, and you are unseated, you unravel, uh, and that's what it feels like. The Eagles' offense in the last five weeks, it's getting worse, is 30th in giveaways, 23rd in passing yards and offensive touchdowns per game. So again, Sirianni leaves, They have some inertia from that offense. Shane Steichen leaves, excuse me. They've got some momentum from that offense. The longer he's gone, the worse it gets. It looks like to me it's a Brandon Staley thing. By the way, Brandon Staley was one of the finalists for the jobs in Philadelphia. That's why the Chargers, I was told, hire him. The Eagles wanted him. So they wanted a new young guy. Staley didn't work. Nick Sirianni loses Monday. I mean, if the story is out by a legitimate reporter, firing him is on the table If he loses, well, that means if he loses, he's fired. (laughs) Unless it's like a brilliant offensive performance. They lose in overtime. There's a bad officiating call. So this is the one to keep your eye on with Belichick. It's not being discussed because it's not open. But I, I, I always worry if you can't get your side of the ball right. And secondly, when you have a great coordinator or somebody leaves, and the longer that person's gone, the uglier it gets. Remember, over 50, 60% of the guys hired don't make it. Right? They don't make it. And even the great ones, Andy Reid in Philly, Belichick in New England, eventually that doesn't work, and you move on. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.